The producers, a 1967 movie, became a classic due to its unique storyline and memorable characters. Zero Moss Tell, an experienced Broadway actor, was chosen for the role of Max Bialystok. Moss Tell's comedic timing and ability to make any line funny made him a perfect fit. On the other hand, Gene Wilder, relatively new to the industry, was selected to play Leo Bloom. Wilder's nervous energy and wide-eyed innocence won over the filmmakers. His chemistry with Moss Tell during auditions sealed the deal. The film's director, Mel Brooks, had worked with Moss Tell before and knew he could handle the demanding role. However, for the role of Leo Bloom, Brooks held open auditions. Wilder, initially rejected, was called back after Brooks saw his potential. The casting of the minor roles was also crucial. Kenneth Mars, known for his Shakespearean background, was cast as Franz Liebkind, the eccentric playwright. His over-the-top performance added to the film's humor. Lee Meredith, a model with no acting experience, was chosen as Ulla, the sexy secretary. Her freshness and charm brought a unique energy to the cast. The casting process for the producers was not without challenges. Mostel's demanding nature and Wilder's inexperience required patience and understanding from the filmmakers. However, their dedication and commitment to their roles paid off, creating a timeless comedy. In the end, the success of the producers can be attributed to its talented cast. Each actor brought their unique strengths creating a synergy that translated into unforgettable performances. The film's enduring legacy is a testament to the power of great casting. In the mid-1960s, filmmaker Mel Brooks set out to create a groundbreaking comedy that would satirize the world of Broadway. The result was the 1967 movie, The Producers. To bring his unique vision to life, Brooks employed a distinctive directing style, blending slapstick humor with biting satire. Brooks drew inspiration from his own experiences as a struggling comedy writer in New York City. This personal touch lent an authenticity to the film's portrayal of the entertainment industry's inner workings. He also drew inspiration from the classic comedies of the 1930s, incorporating elements of farce and absurdity into the film's plot. One of the most notable aspects of Brooks' directorial approach was his willingness to collaborate closely with his cast and crew. He worked closely with actor Zero Mostel and Gene Wilder, helping them to develop their characters and refine their comedic timing. Brooks also collaborated with cinematographer Joseph Coffey to create a visual style that complemented the film's comedic tone. Brooks' approach to directing was characterized by a sense of playfulness and experimentation. He encouraged his cast and crew to take risks and try new things, resulting in a film that is both hilarious and unpredictable. Despite its modest budget, the producers went on to become a critical and commercial success, cementing Brooks' status as a leading figure in American comedy. In crafting the producers, Brooks drew upon a wide range of creative influences, from the classic comedies of the 1930s to his own personal experiences as a struggling writer. His collaborative approach to directing, combined with his willingness to take risks and experiment, resulted in a film that is both timeless and utterly unique. The Producers, a 1967 movie directed by Mel Brooks, is a comedy that tells the story of a Broadway producer and an accountant who scheme to get rich by overselling interests in a Broadway flop. One scene that has had a lasting impact is when the character, Springtime for Hitler, is performed on stage. It's a shocking and hilarious moment that has stayed with many viewers. There are also lesser known facts about the movie that are fascinating. For instance, did you know that the original idea for the producers came to Mel Brooks while he was serving in the army? Or that the movie was initially a box office failure, but later gained a cult following and was turned into a successful Broadway musical? Do you have a most cherished memory or personal experience related to this classic? We would love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. As we delve deeper into the history of the producers, we'll uncover more funny, shocking, and even sad facts that will give you a new appreciation for this timeless film. So, keep watching! In the production of The Producers, set design played a crucial role. The film's art department, led by designer Charles Rosen, created elaborate sets to capture the spirit of Broadway. The apartment of the character Max Bialystok, for instance, was designed to reflect his flamboyant personality with its over-the-top decorations. The movie was primarily filmed in Hollywood, with sound stages at Paramount Pictures standing in for various locations. The production team managed to transform these stages into a bustling New York City, complete with busy streets and towering skyscrapers. 
One of the logistical challenges faced during filming was the need to create the illusion of a packed theater for the show within a show. Springtime for Hitler. To achieve this, the production team built a massive set with multiple tiers of seats. They also employed the use of matte paintings and optical illusions to make the theater appear even larger. An innovative technique used in this classic was the concept of breaking the fourth wall. This film frequently had characters speaking directly to the audience, a technique that was not commonly used in the 1960s. This required careful planning and execution to ensure that the audience felt engaged and included in the story. Despite the challenges, the production team of the producers managed to create a memorable and engaging film that has stood the test of time. The set design, filming locations, and innovative techniques all contributed to the movie's success and its enduring legacy. The Producers, a movie released in 1967, has stood the test of time and remains a beloved classic. This film, directed by Mel Brooks, tells the story of a down-on-his-luck Broadway producer named Max Bialystok and his mild-mannered accountant, Leo Bloom. Together, they hatch a plan to make more money by producing a surefire flop. Max Bialystok, played by Zero Moss Tell, is a charismatic and eccentric character. With his charming personality and ability to manipulate others, he is able to secure funding for his productions. However, his luck has run out, and he is reduced to scheming and scamming his way to success. Leo Bloom, portrayed by Gene Wilder, is a nebbish and timid accountant who dreams of a more exciting life. When he discovers a loophole in the accounting system that would allow Max and himself to make a fortune, he is drawn into the world of Broadway production. The Producers is a comedy that pokes fun at the world of theater and the people who inhabit it. The film is filled with hilarious moments, witty dialogue, and unforgettable characters. From the over-the-top performances to the outrageous costumes, The Producers is a visual and auditory delight. The film's director, Mel Brooks, is a master of comedy and satire. He has a unique ability to create humor that is both intelligent and accessible. With The Producers, Brooks has crafted a film that is not only funny, but also thought-provoking. The Producers was released in 1967 during a time of social and political upheaval. The film's themes of greed, corruption, and the pursuit of success resonated with audiences of the time. Today, the film remains relevant and continues to entertain new generations of viewers. In conclusion, The Producers is a classic film that has stood the test of time. With its memorable characters, witty dialogue, and hilarious moments, the film remains a favorite among audiences of all ages. Whether you are a fan of comedy, theater, or just a good story, The Producers is a must-see. The Producers, a 1967 movie, is a perfect example of how music can significantly enhance a film's narrative and emotional tone. The score and soundtrack were composed by the talented John Morris, who collaborated closely with director Mel Brooks to create a musical experience that would complement the story's humor and satire. Morris's compositions for this classic are primarily orchestral, with a touch of jazz and swing. The lively opening theme sets the tone for the movie's comedic and fast-paced nature. The score also includes several memorable songs, such as Springtime for Hitler, which is a brilliant blend of irony and humor, reflecting the absurdity of the film's plot. Interestingly, Morris drew inspiration from the film's setting and characters. For instance, the character of Franz Liebkind, a German playwright and former Nazi, is represented through German folk music elements in the score. This clever musical choice adds depth to the character and contributes to the overall comedic effect. The musicians involved in creating the score, including the orchestra, played a crucial role in bringing Morris's compositions to life. Their skillful performances helped to elevate the music and ensure that it resonated with audiences, further enhancing the film's appeal. In addition to the score, the producers features several popular songs from the 1920s and 1930s which are cleverly integrated into the narrative. These songs not only provide a sense of nostalgia, but also serve to highlight the film's theatrical setting and the characters' larger-than-life personalities. Overall, the music in the producers is a testament to the power of composition and performance in enhancing a film's storytelling. By complementing the narrative and emotional tone, the score and soundtrack contribute significantly to the movie's enduring charm and appeal. Zero Mostel, a member of the American Theater Hall of Fame, delivered a memorable performance in The Producers. His co-star, Gene Wilder, played the character Leo Bloom, while Mostel gained fame for his portrayal of Leopold Bloom in an off-Broadway production. 
During the filming of a scene where Leo becomes hysterical in Max's office, Wilder employed a unique method to enhance his performance. He imagined Mostel was harming his pet dog, which helped Wilder tap into the required emotions for the scene. This anecdote showcases the dedication and professionalism of the actors and the producers. In the opening scene of this classic, The Producers, we find lead actor Zero Mostel as Max by Alistock in a state of desperation. He's surrounded by a sea of elderly women, all clamoring for his attention and investment in their various causes. The scene is a study in chaos, with women shouting over each other, and Moss tells character frantically trying to keep up. Director Mel Brooks uses a frenetic pace to capture the madness of the situation, with quick cuts and close-ups highlighting the desperation in Moss tells eyes. The use of handheld cameras adds to the sense of chaos and confusion. Moss tells performance is over the top, with grand gestures and facial expressions that perfectly capture the character's desperation and hysteria. As the scene progresses, we see Gene Wilder as Leo Bloom enter the fray. Wilder's performance is the perfect counterpoint to Mostel's, with a nervous, twitchy energy that perfectly captures his character's anxiety and unease. The contrast between the two actors is striking, and it's clear from the outset that they have a natural chemistry that makes their eventual partnership both believable and entertaining. The cinematography in this scene is also noteworthy, with a muted color palette that adds to the sense of desperation and decay. The use of shadows and light is particularly effective, with the characters often appearing as mere silhouettes against a darkened background. The impact of this scene on the audience is significant, as it sets the tone for the rest of the movie and introduces us to the two central characters. It's a brilliant example of comedic timing, with both actors playing off each other to perfection. In an interview with The Guardian, Wilder reflected on his experience working with Moss Tell, saying, Zero was a force of nature. He was so funny, so quick, so alive. Working with him was like being on a roller coaster ride, exhilarating, terrifying, and completely unforgettable. Brooks himself has spoken about the challenges of directing such a chaotic scene, saying, It was like herding cats. But Zero and Gene were such pros, they made it look easy. They were both so funny, and they had such great chemistry together. It was a joy to watch them work. Overall, the opening scene of the producers is a masterclass in comedic timing, with brilliant performances from both leads and stunning cinematography that perfectly captures the chaos and desperation of the situation. It's a scene that resonates with audiences to this day, and it's a testament to the enduring legacy of this classic movie. Mel Brooks holds the esteemed EGOT status, being the eighth person and fifth man to achieve this honor. His movie, The Producers, features a curious detail where the Hold Me, Touch Me Lady gives the character Bialystok the name Rudolfo. Interestingly, this is also the name of the chauffeur Bialystok hires after raising funds for the play. Despite rumors that The Producers was banned in Germany, German distributors merely declined to distribute it, which is not the same as an official ban. The film's lackluster response in the UK may have contributed to this disinterest. In summary, Mel Brooks' EGOT status, the recurring name Rudolfo, and the misconception about the film's ban in Germany all add depth to the story of the producers. Released in 1967, the movie The Producers quickly resonated with audiences due to its unique blend of comedy and satire. The film, directed and starring Mel Brooks, revolves around a theatrical producer and an accountant who schemed to get rich by overselling interests in a Broadway flop. The groundbreaking humor in this classic pushed boundaries, leading to both controversy and acclaim. Its irreverent take on serious topics, such as Nazism and war, was initially met with resistance. However, the film's ability to tackle taboo subjects with humor ultimately contributed to its success and influence on pop culture. The producers popularized the concept of a show within a show, inspiring numerous future productions. Its memorable characters, like the flamboyant director Roger de Brie, and unforgettable lines, such as I was born in darkness, raised in darkness, and that's where I'm going to die, have permeated popular culture and been referenced in various media. Moreover, the movie sparked discussions on relevant social and cultural themes. It satirized the commercialization of art, raising questions about the value of art versus its profitability. The film also subverted gender norms, with the character of Debris being an openly gay man, which was quite progressive for its time. In the end, the producers left an indelible mark on cinema and pop culture. Its bold humor, memorable characters, and thought-provoking themes continue to resonate with audiences today. 
in the creation of the 1967 film, the producers, writer-director Mel Brooks, initially had Peter Sellers in mind for the role of Bloom. Brooks spent an afternoon with Sellers at Bloomingdale's, trying to convince him to take the part, but to no avail. Years later, Sellers played a crucial role in the film's release. After the completion of the movie, originally titled Springtime for Hitler, executive producer Joseph E. Levine refused to release it, finding it in poor taste and not funny. However, while Sellers was in Hollywood making I Love You, Alice B. Toklas, he held screenings for his friends, where the producers were shown one night. Sellers loved the film, and despite some influence from illegal substances, a word-of-mouth campaign grew around it. Sellers even took out a full-page ad in Variety, praising the movie. When Levine refused to release the film, Sellers intervened, convincing him to change the title to the producers and releasing it. The Drunk in the Theater Bar is played by William Hickey, a character actor known for his work in Prezi's Honor and The Nightmare Before Christmas, where he lent his unique voice to the mad scientist. Released in 1967, the comedy film The Producers quickly gained attention for its unique storyline and humor. Directed by Mel Brooks, the movie revolves around a theatrical producer and an accountant who schemed to get rich by overselling interest in a Broadway flop. Critics praise the film for its innovative and bold humor. In his review for the New York Times, renowned critic Bosley Crowther described it as a satire on the evils of show business and commended Brooks for his uproarious humor. He also lauded the performances of the lead actors, Zero Mostel and Gene Wilder, for their outstanding and hilarious portrayals. The film was also a hit with audiences, who appreciated its irreverent take on the entertainment industry. Viewers were particularly taken with the film's memorable characters and unforgettable musical numbers, such as Springtime for Hitler. The producers received one Academy Award nomination for Best Writing, Story, and Screenplay, written directly for the screen. Although it did not win, the nomination was a testament to the film's impact and influence on the industry. The accolades and positive reception for the producers were significant for those involved in the film. For Mel Brooks, the film marked his directorial debut and established him as a talented and original filmmaker. The film's success also helped launch the careers of its lead actors, Zero Mostel and Gene Wilder, who went on to become celebrated figures in the world of comedy. In conclusion, The Producers was a groundbreaking and influential film that left a lasting impact on the comedy genre. Its critical acclaim and enduring popularity are a testament to the film's enduring appeal and the talent of those involved in its creation. In the world of film, there are instances where similar ideas are conceived independently. This was the case with The Producers, a 1967 movie, and the British production Mr. 10%. Both of which featured plots about producing a play to lose money for tax reasons. The producers starred Gene Wilder, who, in 2001, was recognized by a mother in a supermarket. She whispered to her kids that he was Willy Wonka, to which Wilder agreed, as long as she kept her voice down. The mother then turned to Wilder and acknowledged the lasting impact of his work. Zero Mostel, who co-starred with Wilder, was no stranger to acclaim. In 1964, he won a Tony Award for his role in Fiddler on the Roof. His performance in The Producers further solidified his status as a talented actor. The Producers remains a classic in the realm of comedy, leaving a mark on the film industry and continuing to resonate with audiences today. In the late 1960s, a unique comedy named The Producers hit the silver screen, leaving audiences in stitches. The film's journey to stardom was filled with laughter, challenges, and unforgettable moments. During the auditions, director Mel Brooks had a clear vision for the character of Franz Liebkind, the eccentric German playwright. After seeing dozens of hopefuls, he found the perfect fit in actor Kenneth Mars. Mars, who stood at 6'4", had to slouch and hunch to embody the diminutive Liebkind, creating an iconic and hilarious performance. The film's production faced several obstacles, including a limited budget. To save money, the crew decided to film the musical number Springtime for Hitler in Black, and white, despite the rest of the movie being in color. This creative decision added to the satirical and darkly comedic tone of the scene. Zero Mostel, the talented actor portraying the cunning producer Max Bialystok, had a notorious reputation for improvisation. In one scene, Mostel ad-libbed a line about a producer's worst nightmare, a flop. The unexpected remark left co-star Gene Wilder, playing the neurotic Leo Bloom, in genuine laughter, capturing a genuine and amusing moment on film. The film's premiere was met with mixed reactions, as some critics failed to appreciate its irreverent humor. 
However, the producers gained a cult following over the years, eventually winning an Academy Award for Best Original Screenplay in 1969. In the end, the producers became a testament to Mel Brooks' comedic genius and the cast's incredible talent. The film's enduring legacy continues to resonate with audiences, reminding us all that sometimes, laughter truly is the best medicine. In the film, the producers, a recent American Academy of Dramatic Arts graduate named Lee Meredith, was invited to audition for the role of Ulla. She was told she needed to know a Swedish accent, so she borrowed a book from the ADA library to learn it. Her screen test, which featured her dancing, won her the part. Gene Wilder, who played the role of Leo Bloom in the movie, was diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma in 1999. He underwent chemotherapy and was treated with adult stem cell therapy the following year. He made a full recovery. The film's creator, Mel Brooks, won three Tony Awards in 2001 for the musical adaptation of The Producers. He won as a co-producer of the Best Musical, Best Book, and Best Original Musical Score. The musical was a success just like the movie. The Producers has left a lasting impact on the world of entertainment, and its legacy continues to this day. The Producers, directed by Mel Brooks, made a significant impact when it hit the screens in 1967. This groundbreaking movie, known for its satirical humor, pushed boundaries, and left an indelible mark on film history. Delving into the world of Broadway, the film tells the story of two producers who scheme to get rich by overselling interests in a deliberately terrible play. The comedic genius of Brooks, coupled with the unforgettable performances of Zero Mostel and Gene Wilder, made this movie a true classic. The producers influence future filmmaking by demonstrating the power of satire and dark comedy. It paved the way for other filmmakers to explore similar themes and styles, leading to a richer, more diverse film landscape. Moreover, the film's success transcended the silver screen. In 2001, it was adapted into a successful Broadway musical, which then spawned a 25s and 5 film adaptation. This enduring legacy is a testament to the film's enduring appeal and influence. The producers continues to resonate with audiences, inspiring filmmakers and entertainers around the globe. Its unique blend of humor, satire, and memorable characters has left an enduring mark on the tapestry of film history. This classic continues to captivate new generations, a testament to its timeless appeal. After all, as they say in show business, that's entertainment. In the world of comedy, certain figures stand out for their exceptional contributions. Mel Brooks, for instance, is known for his work on films like The Fly and Spaceballs, for which he collaborated with his son, Nicholas Brooks. The younger Brooks served as a story editor. Another comedy legend, Gene Wilder, has appeared in four films included in the American Film Institute's list of the 100 funniest movies. These include The Producers, Blazing Saddles, Young Frankenstein, and Silver Streak. The Producers, a classic comedy, features a memorable scene in which the play Springtime for Hitler is performed. Interestingly, the theater where the scene was filmed did not have an orchestra pit. To create the illusion of one, Production designer Charles Rosen removed the front rows of seats and used low lighting to simulate lighting coming from the orchestra pit. The man posing as the conductor is actually seated just in front of the stage on an apple box. This clever trickery added to the comedic effect of the scene. Did the producers leave a lasting impression on you? This classic movie from 1967, directed by Mel Brooks, has made a significant impact on many cinema lovers. We'd love to hear about your personal experiences and memories related to this film. How did the producers influence your perspective on cinema? Perhaps it introduced you to a new genre or made you appreciate the art of comedy even more. Share your thoughts with us and the community. Maybe you discovered this movie during a particular period in your life and it has since become a sentimental favorite. We'd love to hear about the role the producers has played in your cinematic journey. By engaging in this conversation, You'll not only be sharing a piece of your own history, but also becoming part of our ongoing cinematic exploration. So, don't hesitate to like, share, and subscribe to join us in delving deeper into the world of film. We can't wait to hear about the personal impact the producers has had on you. So, go ahead and share your stories, memories, and insights in the comments below. Let's keep the conversation